Hey guys, what's going on? My name is Tuvas, and I'm here today to bring you guys a tutorial video for the game VTOL VR. In today's tutorial, I'm going to go over the startup, carrier launching, as well as carrier landing procedures. Uh, please keep in mind, I am not a pilot, and I do not study anything related to being a pilot, so if any terminology I use is incorrect, please feel free to correct me in the comments below. With that being said, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so first things first, in order to do anything in VTOL VR, you need to have a working aircraft, correct? So, uh, first little tip before you do anything, if you, plan on, <laughs> if you plan on spending an extended amount of time on the carrier deck like I am for a tutorial, make sure you engage your parking brake or your brake lock because uh, with the engine uh, started, there's a chance that you'll accidentally roll off the deck. So uh, just keep that in mind. That's a little tip that I learned while creating this tutorial. <laughs> I may include in the outtakes part. Uh, so now for the actual start procedures, go ahead and turn on your main battery, as well as your auxiliary power unit or APU, and go ahead and wait for your APU to spool up. So that is wait for the dial to go all the way to the top because starting the engines prematurely could cause issues. So with it fully spooled up, go ahead and start up your left and right engines and wait for those to spool up as well. So again, just watch the dials. They'll go up to probably about one third to a quarter of the way. And then they'll drop back down to idle. When they drop back down, there you go. Now they're dropping back down. Go ahead and stop your APU. And then close all your switch covers. From here, we're going to turn on the systems that we are going to actually need for our mission. In my case, I'm going to turn on the HUD or heads of display, the MFDs or MFCDs or multifunctional color displays. And I'm going to set these up to what I need for this tutorial. For example, I'm definitely going to be using the spectator cam. Hey, I'm going to be using the target uh, camera. So let's go ahead and aim this over at the carrier deck because I like seeing where I'm landing. And then go ahead and turn on the navigation computer, which is probably going to be the most important step in the system setup process because it gives you an icon, a blue icon for your carrier, but also these two blue lines, which I'll be going over later. I'm going to zoom out just a little bit. And that is the startup procedure. So from here, let's go ahead and move on to the actual preparation for uh, launching off the carrier deck. Before we can actually use the catapult launchers themselves, so those guys over there, uh, we need to set up the aircraft so, they can, so it can actually use the catapult. So to do that, go to your cat hook setting and drop it down to deploy. Also, to make the takeoff process much, much easier, also set your flaps to full or to the number two position. Uh, next, you're going to want to take off your parking brake and then take control of your aircraft. Now, uh, before we can go anywhere, we need to actually rotate our engines from 90 degrees, which is what they are by default when you first start, down to zero. And what you'll notice is that you'll actually already be rolling because there's a small amount of thrust being generated by your engines at idle power. So go ahead and bring yourself over to one of these catapults and just as you approach it, make sure you line up at the track and come to a full stop using your left trigger on the throttle. Now, slowly approach the catapult itself and before you actually get to it, come to a complete stop so you're ready to go are lined up with the track itself uh, go ahead and slowly approach it by slowly letting go of your brake with the left trigger so as you let go you're going to start rolling forward again so make sure you play with it a little bit as you approach the track itself and make sure you stay aligned and you'll eventually feel the catapult take control of your aircraft there you go there's the thud so go ahead and release all your controls but keep your hand on the throttle once you feel it come to a stop just like that go ahead and do full throttle and hold on Because we have full flaps, the aircraft is going to take off on its own, so use this opportunity to raise the landing gear, you know, get nice and comfortable, and then take control of the joystick and start flying your aircraft. Of course, at this point, go ahead and raise your cat hook, and also raise your flaps so you can get some full speed going. And just like that, you're flying. That easy, huh? Now for the actual hard part, which is the, uh, the landing. <laughs> Fun times. Before we can actually land on the carrier, there are probably three or four very, very important HUD elements to keep in mind as you're coming in for a landing. And that is the nose attitude indicator, meaning that this is where your nose is currently pointed so that if you were to move this onto, for example, the five degree horizon line, you'll know that your nose is currently at a five degree incline in its current path. 
The other important HUD element is your current airspeed. Uh, that's pretty simple enough to grasp. Your current velocity, in, or rather your current throttle uh, setting, which is if you were to increase or decrease, you can see that the meter goes up and down depending on where your current throttle position is. But also, very importantly, is your trajectory indicator. And that is represented by the circle with three lines. The top is supposed to rep represent the tail of the aircraft. Meanwhile, the lines on the sides are the wings. And that is anywhere where that icon is sitting on top of is where your aircraft is eventually going to be. So to give you a quick demonstration of that, let's go ahead and try to line that up with the carrier itself. This icon alone isn't enough for landing on a carrier because obviously at this kind of angle, I won't actually be landing on the carrier. I'll instead be crashing onto the carrier. So uh, there's a lot more than just this icon, but this is a, a very important step in landing properly on a carrier. With the important HUD elements out of the way, uh, what's arguably probably even more important than these is the actual equipment required to, well, land on an aircraft carrier. And that is, you're gonna have to make sure to deploy your landing hook, extend your flaps to full, and also lower your landing gear. Uh, with all those set, you are now ready to, oh, and shush, with all those set, you are now ready to actually land on the aircraft carrier. However, what you also need to keep in mind is, on your navigation monitor, what you'll notice is that there is a blue icon that represents the actual aircraft carrier itself, but there is also two blue lines to indicate the approach path that you should be taking as you fly in and approach the carrier because once you align yourself up with this uh, guiding path, uh, you'll actually be able to see that you're lined up with the actual landing strip itself. So let's go ahead and show you what I'm talking about. I've went ahead and lined ourselves up a bit better in between these two blue lines. Of course, I'm about to overshoot the aircraft carrier, but this is just to demonstrate that once you get yourself in between these two lines and facing the carrier, it will now more or less be lined up with the landing strip as well. So just keep in mind, this is a very important element of your uh, navigation computer. So always keep in mind about this as you approach the carrier. There's also a very important system which is not actually found on your aircraft, but is instead mounted to the side of the aircraft carrier. And that is the OLS, or Optical Landing System. A grid of green, yellow, and red lights meant for guiding your glide towards the landing deck. The row of green lights represent where you want to be during your glide. Meanwhile, the yellow light, or ball, represents where you actually are in the glide. If you are too high during the glide, the ball will be above the row of green lights. Similarly, if you are too low during the glide, the ball will actually be below the green lights. And finally, if you are way too low, there are two final red lights at the very bottom of the OLS. In the real world, uh, these red lights mean you are ordered to apply full power and go around for another attempt at landing. But I don't think this is actually what that means in VTOL VR. With all those topics covered, it is now time to give you a few demonstrations of landing on the aircraft carrier. Please keep in mind, the approach to the carrier can vary depending on your different weapon configurations weighing down on your aircraft. In my case, I am flying on a full tank, but with no weapons. So for now, you can use this tutorial as a starting point for practice and adjust as needed based on your loadout. Remember, practice makes perfect, and you will eventually build up the muscle memory and instincts needed to get this landing down each time. That said, we are nice and lined up with the carrier, and now our goal is to line up the trajectory indicator with the carrier and place both right between the negative 5 and negative 10 degree lines. Now, you'll want to double check and make sure your settings are all correct. So your landing hook should be deployed, flaps are fully extended, and landing gear is down. In addition to keeping your trajectory and the carrier between the negative 5 and negative 10 degree lines, we also need to keep our nose between the positive 5 and positive 10 degree lines. In this demonstration, however, I'm keeping both the nose as well as my trajectory a bit too close to the respective 5 degree lines. This results in our ball on the OLS turning red right as we touch down, well before the arrestor cables. Our goal here is to land onto the arrestor cables, not before them. And one last thing to keep in mind is that right as you touch down, go to full power because in the event that you miss the arresting cables or one of them snap, you'll have enough momentum to keep yourself going for another pass.
just the same as before, let's go ahead and double check and make sure our landing hook is down, our flaps are down, and our landing gear is down. Make sure we're approaching our path to the carrier correctly, and keep an eye on the actual carrier as we turn in to make sure that we get the carrier landing lines to be as vertical as possible from our perspective. And please note, it's better to turn in early than it is to turn in too late, because if you turn in early, you can easily just slowly level out a bit and correct your path that way. The goal now is to get both the carrier as well as the trajectory indicator lined up and right between the negative 5 and negative 10 degree lines. And on, in addition to that, we also need to keep our attitude indicator or our nose between the positive 5 and positive 10 degree lines, which is what it's doing right now. And what I'm doing now is I'm slowing down my aircraft to the point where it stalls, but the goal here is to kind of raise the carrier icon a bit more because it's too close to the negative 10 degree line. So I stalled the aircraft out a bit, but I was able to raise the carrier just a bit more. So now I'm doing my best to try to line up my trajectory indicator with the carrier. Now the carrier lit up, and I can clearly see the landing pad now. And I can also see the OLS just a little bit. It's a little hard to see from these distances, but I can still make it out. And now, now that I have both my nose and the trajectory indicator lined up perfectly, it's a matter of adjusting my speed so that both remain in their respective positions up until we touch down. However, if you look down at the targeting pod, the landing strip isn't perfectly vertical, but that shouldn't be too much of an issue provided we land in the center. Good, the OLS is not turning red, it's all yellow, and we touch down right on the arrestor cables. We have a little bit of a bounce because we didn't land right smack in the middle, but that wasn't too bad. And once more, double check your settings that your landing hook, flaps, and gear are all down. Make sure you are following the correct path to the carrier, but in this demonstration, I actually overshoot the path just a bit, which results me, which results in me having to correct and go more to the right as I pull back around. So now I'm adjusting my path, so I go to the right of the carrier now, and once I've lined myself up with the actual landing strip and making sure that the lines on the landing strip are vertical, I start to turn in and correct my path once more. This is why it's better to, uh, to not do it this way. And as it seems, both the carrier and trajectory indicator are both right in the perfect spot between the negative 5 and negative 10 degree marks, and the nose, added, uh, the nose as well is right between the positive 5 and positive 10 degree marks. So right now, it's actually nearly perfect as far as lining up is concerned. On top of that, even the landing strip is also nearly vertical, so this is already looking like a really good approach. I'm making minor adjustments with my speed to try to bring the trajectory indicator a bit further down because it's a little bit too close to the 5 degree mark and my nose is a bit too close to the 10 degree mark which isn't too much of an issue but it's something I should correct. And as we're coming in we can see that the OLS is nice and lined up with the yellow and green and we're about to touch down right on top of the arrestor cables. And perfect! That was a beautiful landing. It wasn't really right in the center because as you can see we're still off center from the yellow part of the strip, but it's not bad at all. Thank you guys for watching. If you liked this video, go ahead and leave a like. If you really liked it and like to see more of this kind of stuff, go make sure to hit that subscribe button. Uh, if you guys are interested in VTOL VR, it is an early access game that is available on Steam. So I will leave a link to the uh, to the store page on Steam in the description below. Just keep in mind, one of the prerequisites is you have to have a VR headset, so for example the HTC Vive or the Oculus Rift, but you also need, as of this time, motion controllers as well. Luckily the Vive come with them, however the Oculus Rift you will have to buy the Oculus Touch controllers along with the Rift, so just keep that in mind. Thank you guys again for watching and have a nice day.